Hello and welcome back to a, another episode of Laptop Retrospective. Today we're going to be continuing to work on our X220 that we picked up a couple days ago. And what we're going to be doing is a few things. Uh, we're going to be removing the 2.5 inch Windows 10 320 gig SSD that came with the unit. And we are going to be installing the MSATA drive that can actually fit uh, inside of this unit. It is a little bit of work to get to, but dropping in an MSATA hard disk to run your OS and do your basic uh, core computing off of on this model uh, turns it into quite the contender in terms of boot time and just performance. Uh, coupled on, uh, with the 8 gigs of RAM that we have sitting in there, uh, this is actually going to be a, a speedy, speedy little unit. Uh, for benchmark purposes, we are going to uh, boot the laptop running uh, the current OS of Windows 10. So we're just going to get that in the frame here. And I'm going to get my stopwatch handy. And we'll see what our boot time is uh, kind of in pre-upgrade. Pre so I'll also have the time code probably there. Okay, there's the ThinkPad screen, which was a little slow actually, but there's our Windows logo. The welcome screen. Okay, so that's about 49, 50 seconds, and it looks like the OS is uh, responsive. So that's actually, for the age of the computer, the fact that it's running a mechanical hard drive, that's not too bad. I've definitely, definitely seen worse, but I think that it's a little bit better because of the eight gigs of RAM that's running in this model versus the six mismatch that I have in the other one. So we're going to go ahead and power uh, the unit down and we're going to tear it down. So we've got everything here that we need to do the job. We have the MSATA hard disk, we have some screw containers, we have our sophisticated uh, pry tools if we need them, and of course we have our screwdrivers. We're going to go ahead and move the hard drive to the side. And we're going to flip the machine over and we're going to remove the battery. And once the battery is removed, it's a good habit to discharge the machine by holding the power button for a good 10 seconds just to make sure that anything that was built up in a capacitor uh, is discharged and clear. Now that we've done that, let's take a look at uh, the bottom here. And to do that, we'll uh, zoom in just a little bit. And a handy thing about Lenovo is all of the little screw areas are labeled so we know which ones that we need to remove. If I remember right, we need to at least remove the screws uh, for the keyboard. And to remove the keyboard, we also need to remove the palm rest. So we're gonna look for all the little screws that are labeled literally with a keyboard symbol or a palm rest symbol, and we're gonna remove them. So that would be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Let's go ahead and do that. Use our magnet. And we want this one. It might seem like such a small thing to be able to take apart uh, your computer, but in, in this day and age, it's more of a rarity 
uh, than it is common. Being able to do something as trivial as take apart your own computer is uh, kind of amazing. Most manufacturers are not really interested in allowing you to do this anymore, uh, primarily because it's harder to warranty things if your customer can access different components of the machine, I guess, would be their, their best argument. However, if we're being brutally honest, the reason that I think the repair ability trend has plummeted is two reasons, and they're kind of the, the fault of the same company. One is the quest for thinness, and thinness means soldered on, uh, soldered on components, and of course, the fact that it's not fashionable anymore to own an older computer. And we, we all know who we can blame for fashionable computers. <coughs> now that we've loosened up the screws, we can actually see that some of these components are already becoming nice and loose. The keyboard's actually really easy to remove. You literally just press on it and wiggle it back and forth. I think we might be missing a screw on the bottom. Let's check that out. Oh, yep, there's one, one more keyboard screw. It's been a while since I've taken one of these apart. There we go, our keyboard has literally just started to fall out. And we've got a ribbon cable hanging out on the main board. And we want to be very uh, careful and just detach it like that. So there's uh, the keyboard. It's just a friction fit connector right there. Again, if you need to know your part number uh, for the keyboard, it's right there. And you can uh, purchase these actually for a pretty inexpensive amount of money. Uh, while we're here, this is actually like plastic coated on the back. So if you do get any liquid spill, it uh, doesn't actually go through the membrane of the keyboard. So now we can lift the trackpad. You'll see right here, we have the ribbon cable uh, for the connector. So we can just go ahead and flick that up with our fingernail. And the blue tab here, we can just pull it and that'll come free. And again, you can actually see the plastic mold uh, right here. Pardon me. This is where your fingerprint reader would go if uh, this was one of the pieces that was punched out for it. Of course, it is not. It's a solid piece. Um, and then it would have a split, uh, split ribbon uh, here. Again, this ribbon cable from both ends is actually replaceable. So if you had just had a bad cable, you could replace it or you could replace uh, the entire uh, bottom palm rest and click pad. So again, having the ability to uh, repair all these parts individually is really, really cool. And of course, kind of shows the, the bygone era of computing in some regards. Let's take a look. So here we can actually see the top of the CPU fan. Over here, we've got the expansion card slot, the archaic piece of technology that it is. And inside we can actually see the kind of the reinforcing that the laptop has. So it's not just an entirely plastic uh, chassis, it's actually fairly well reinforced. However, uh, what we are here for today is this area over here. So let's get a good uh, shot of that workspace, shall we? So over here is the Wi-Fi card. It's just hanging out. And there are silica beads in this machine. That is interesting. At least what I can only presume is silica beads. They look like silica beads. So the only reason I can think that they put silica beads in here is that this might have seen <laughs> some action on that spill resistant keyboard which is, again, not a huge concern, it's just a kind of forensic knowledge. All right, we're gonna move our antenna pieces out of the way. 
So we've got this workspace clear. And our SATA, M SATA slot is actually right down in here. And the one retaining screw for the drive is right over here. So we're gonna have to disconnect uh, the black end of the Wi-Fi antenna to install the drive, which can be encouraged out ever so gently, like that. And I'm just gonna feed these up and out of the way of the workspace. And let us open the drive. And there is a little bit of security tape here that we will take care of. I never get over how small MSATA drives are. So let's zoom back in on our workspace and remove this one uh, silver colored screw. And we're gonna take our cute little MSATA drive and we're gonna stuff it in there. And it's a, a drive that kind of hinges into place. So you wiggle it in and it'll be springy, just like that. And you'll know it's in because it'll line up with that little plastic tab that is slightly obscured by that piece of tape. Then all we need to do is take our stainless steel screw, hold it down, screw that back into place, make sure that it's not gonna move, bring our antenna wires back through the plastic chassis. Plug in the Wi-Fi antenna, because if we don't, we're gonna be really confused why our Wi-Fi doesn't work after we do the drive swap, or drive install, I should say. There's not a swap happening here. At this point, if we wanted to, we could flip uh, the machine over and tear it down the rest of the way. However, uh, in this case, that's really all we wanted to do. Assembly is the reversal of disassembly. And then we've got one more optional step. And that is, we are gonna uh, remove the three and a half inch, or pardon me, the two and a, two and a half inch drive that currently has uh, Windows 10 on it. Because this computer is destined for greatness. And it can't be destined with greatness if it keeps that same old boring operating system on there. So let's remove that, uh, that hard drive. Single screw over here, which is retain. And just so I'm not wasting loads of time playing with it. We're gonna reach in there and flick out that little plastic tab. <sighs> Pull the hard drive out. And as I said in an earlier video, it's aftermarket. It's a Western Digital Blue. So, you know that the original hard drive is long gone, uh, possibly due to uh, security reasons. If there was like uh, data on there from a company or whatever, they're obviously not gonna want that going into the used computer market. Uh, but the used computer market still needs to actually give me a hard drive. So now with that pulled out, there is no operating system that can boot to this drive which is exactly what we want because we, we have work to do.